Now, our lecture today is certain entities or examples of cystic lesion of the joints. First of all, we are going to discuss radicular cyst or peripheral cyst, which is one of the inflammatory bone cysts of the jaw. This is or the origin of this cystic lesion due to proliferation of the epithelial rest of molasses, which is found in the heart, which is epithelial root sheet, which is responsible for the formation of the root of the tooth. Here, this cystic lesion developed due to pulp necrosis, could be septic or could be aseptic pulp necrosis due to infection or non infection, and the infection spreads to the peripheral region and leads to establishment of the peripheral cyst or radicular cyst. So, usually the cystic lesion associated with non vital tooth. Radiographically, the cystic lesion usually appears as well demarcated radiolucency and usually surrounded by a layer of radio fat. Usually, it is associated with apex of the tooth. Sometimes, however, the cystic or the radiolucency might be situated laterally and associated with accessory canal. Actually, here, this is the, radiograph the radiographical feature. The clinical appearance of the lesion, usually the lesion situated within the labial or buccal vestibule, causing pain, painless swelling situated within the labial or buccal vestibule. Actually, the peripheral or cystic lesion or peripheral cyst usually can be treated by inoculation or multiplization. This depends on the size of the lesion. Here, we have to differentiate radiographically between three pathological conditions associated with the effects of the tooth. If the, if the radiolucency, if there is well demarcated radiolucency associated with epics of the tooth, and the size of this radiolucency less than 1.5 cm, the possible diagnosis could be peripheral granuloma. But if the radiolucency of well demarcated border or lines, the size more than 1.5, the possible diagnosis could be peripheral cyst. In case of abscess, actually there is no well demarcated border or line of radiolucency because it is uh, abscess. So there, there is more destruction, but there is no well demarcated line to differentiate from the other pathological condition associated with the effects of the tooth. Residual cyst actually it's a sort or type of peripheral cyst or radicular cyst. And this usually cystic lesion or peripheral cyst uh, persists in the jaw bone after removal of the tooth or after extraction of the tooth. So it's called residual cyst. And usually it can be seen here in the edentulous area. And also treatment depends on the size whether manipulated whether inoculation or multiplication. The lateral periodontal cyst actually is very important. This is usually uh, due to infection, uh, as we can see here, the gingival infection, there is actually, it is sometimes it's called adult gingival cyst, or sometimes also it could be, uh, might be developed to lateral periodontal cyst. So there is what we call peripheral, what we call periodontal, not per, uh, periodontal pocket. Okay. So here we can see there is periodontal pocket, and this could be the source of the infection, which leads to the development of lateral periodontal cyst. From its name, lateral, that means radiographically it is situated lateral to the root. And uh, the tooth usually is vital because the source of the infection, it is not from the tooth, not from the pulp, but from the gingiva. So usually situated laterally, and the tooth clinically is vital. The swelling usually found in the attached gingiva or could be in the interdental family or within the gingival mark. So these features, the vitality of the tooth, the position of the cystic lesion clinically, these might be differentiated between lateral periodontal cyst and the peripheral cyst. And also the treatment of lateral periodontal cyst actually different from that of peripheral cyst. So in case of lateral periodontal cyst, it can be treated by periodontal surgery while the case of peripheral cyst could be treated by manipulation or multiplication or inoculation according to the size of the lesion. Dentigenous cyst, it is one of, of actually developmental odontogenic cysts. That means it is also the epithelial lining odontogenic. But the origin or the source of the, of, the, of, the, of the cystic lesion, the origin of the cystic lesion from the reduced enamel epithelium during the embryonic development of the tooth, there is, reduced, there is reduced enamel epithelium. So, usually affecting the, or usually arises 
in the last two in the series, for example, in the case of upper canine, in the unerupted upper canine, or even in the unerupted lower last molar or lower wisdom tooth. Here, there is accumulation of fluid between the crown of the tooth and the overlying oral mucosa, or, or sometimes the reduced enamel epithelium. The most important feature, radiographical feature, is that the lesion it is radiolucent actually and well demarcated line, but the shape is irregular. And also the uninterrupted tooth situated within the uh, within the cavity of the cystic lesion. In fact, the integral cyst actually radiographically can be classified into three types. Centrally, when the crown of the tooth uh, situated within or in the center of the uh, uh, cystic cavity, actually we can see here that the cystic lining attached to the cervical line, this is the cervical line or the neck of the tooth, or could be situated laterally or could be circumferentially where it is surrounded the tooth in this case. The treatment of the integral cyst is by multiplization to permit the tooth to erupt in the oral cavity. Another developmental odontogenic cyst, which is called eruption cyst, which is also developed from reduced enamel epithelium, are usually seen in children and in infants and associated with erupted tooth, that means the tooth in the process of eruption or with the uh, deciduous teeth. This is uh, usually situated, superficially situated, and the color range from red to pinkish to bluish discoloration, and the lesion could be birthed by itself due to occlusal trauma, but if persists, it may lead to simple incision. The odontogenic keratocyst also it is one of developmental cysts, but the origin of this cyst is from the dental lamina. So usually situated in the retromolar region, could be seen or associated in the angle of the mandible, or might be projected to the ramus of the mandible. Actually, this cystic lesion may cause swelling uh, or expansion of the cortical plate, cortical plate, and sometimes it may lead to a pathological fracture of the mandible if it is subjected to occlusal trauma. Actually, since it is highly recurrent, so it can be treated by inoculation rather than mass utilization. So, odontogenic keratosis, it should be treated by uh, inoculation to remove the entire uh, cystic lesion. There is actually a certain entity of odontogenic keratosis. When the cystic lesion developed instead of the tooth of the last series, for example, in case of lower uh, wisdom tooth, so in this case, it is called the primordial cyst. When we, when we take history and we found, or when we take x-ray, and we found that there is no uh, wisdom tooth, or there is no, or there is abscess of the tooth. And instead of the tooth, there is cystic lesion. The high or the possible diagnosis could be primordial cyst, which also could be treated by inoculation. Nasopalatine cyst. Actually, this is fissural cyst. It is non-odontogenic cyst. The interrupt epithelial cells during embryonic development between facial processes, facial processes during development. The interrupt epithelial cells might undergo proliferation, and this will lead to cystic formation between the uh, bones during or between the facial processes during the embryo. So, an azopalatine cyst could be developed between the primary palate and the palatine process of the maxillary. These are facial processes during embryonic development. So, epithelial cells could be induced or proliferate and forming this cystic. So, nasopalatine cyst also could be called or could be termed uh, incisive canal or incisive cyst because it is situated within the incisive fossa. Actually, the clinical presentation of this cyst it is usually swelling and the swelling in the anterior region of the maxilla. Here, radiographically, it is very important to differentiate between the incisive fossa and the nasopalatine cyst or incisive canal or incisive cyst. Here, because both of them give well-demarcated well demarcated radio, radiolucency. But in case of cystic lesion, usually the cystic lesion appears as spherical in shape and usually with well-demarcated line. The incisive canal gives also radiolucency, but there is no well-demarcated radiolucency. So and the shape could be irregular. So this might be differentiated between the incisive canal and also the, uh, the nasopalatine uh, duct cyst. Sometimes also it is it might be difficult to differentiate between periapical cyst of the anterior teeth and also the nasopalatine cyst. And this is the uh, vitality test could be uh, differentiated between the periapical cyst and also the nasopalatine cyst. The treatment could be by uh, simple inoculation. 